Oh, that's not too bad. I know. There's only uh, and the NCAA. There you go. That makes it even more. That's uh, Jack Tiger and me. <laughs> oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. All right. We're good enough for now. All right. We're pleased to welcome champion of the 120th U.S. Open, Bryson DeChambeau. How does that sound? Surreal. It sounds amazing, but surreal. It's been a lot of hard work, and I got to say thanks to my whole team. Again, uh, all my sponsors as well. You know, Brett, Tim, my caddy works his butt off every single day for me. Connor works his butt off for me every single day. Chris Como works really, really hard for me and helps me think through a lot of amazing things. And, um, you know, even Mike Shy, I still talk to Mike and we still talk about how to get better, you know? And so I'd be remiss to say, if I didn't say his name either. Um, it's, it's one of those things that, let me just lower this a bit. It's one of those things that doesn't really hit you. It's not going to hit me till tonight. Uh, but I will say that my parents have given so much up for me. I mean, there were times that I went to school without any lunch money and we had to, you know, make bologna sandwiches and didn't have anything to eat. Um, you know, we had some very, very difficult times, but every single day they always wanted the best for me and they always gave me the opportunity to go golf, go practice, and go get better. And this one's, uh, this one's for my parents, it's for Mike Shy, it's for Chris, it's for my whole team. Um, all the work, all the blood, sweat, and tears that we put into it, it, it just means the world to me. Like you said, it's going to be hard to reflect right now, but mm -hmm. that moment on 18 when the putt went in and you put your hands in the air, what was going through your mind? I did it. I did it and as difficult as this golf course was presented I, I played it beautifully even when I got in the rough I was still able to manage my game and hit it to correct sides of the greens except on 14 today uh, thir 14 and kept plugging away um, my putting was immaculate today my speed control incredible that's why we work so hard on my speed control you see me out there on the greens with the device controlling my speed trying to control my speed it's just something that allows me and gives me comfort to know that on this green or these, these speeds of greens, you know, it, it's going to be repeatable. It's going to be this. It's going to be that. And so it just gives me comfort in knowing how far I can take it back and go through. And um, it, I, so many times I relied on, on science, and it worked every single time. We're going to take one from the Cisco WebEx. Your fans and backers are very passionate in their support of you. What do you have to say to them right now? I can't say thank you enough for supporting me and staying with me through thick and thin. And, you know, I, I, there's always going to be people that say things. There's always going to be people that do things. But no matter what, my focus and my message to everybody out there is each and every day that you're living life, try and make this day better than the previous day. Let today's garbage be better than yesterday. And the fans that have always been there, the supporters that have always been there, I, I can't thank you enough for everything that you have meant for me. You've kept me pushing the needle, moving the needle, and you're going to keep inspiring me too. So uh, I really thank you for everything. I couldn't do it without you guys. Cameron. Uh, Bryson, you said the T4 at the PGA felt like you were moving in the right direction. Yeah. Uh, but with, with all of the chatter and all the doubters that, you know, what is he doing, does this absolutely get put you over the edge in terms of validating what you've done? Yeah, absolutely, and I'm not going to stop. Um, next week I'm going to be trying a 48-inch driver. We're going to be messing with some head designs and do some amazing things with, with Cobra uh, to make it feasible to hit these drives, hopefully 360, 370. Maybe even farther. We don't know. Ron. Given the way you've adopted this approach, do you feel like you're potentially changing the game or at least changing the way people think about playing the game? Is I think I'm definitely changing the way people think about the game. Now, whether you can do it, that's a whole different situation. Um, you know, There's going to be a lot of people that are going to be hitting it far. Matthew was hitting it plenty far today. 
A um, couple putts just didn't go in for him today and, and kept the momentum on my side. Uh, so he's definitely got the firepower and the strength to do it. Um, you know, you got to be looking out for him in the future. There's a lot of young guns that are unbelievable players, and I think that this generation, this new, next generation is coming up into golf. Hopefully we'll see this and, and go, hey, I can do that too. Michael. Bryce, um, you very much do things your own way. Uh, what kind of mental strength do you take from that? Uh, it's a lot of validation through science, just making sure that the numbers are what they are and the result is, is accurate. So if I had a, this is just an example, if I had a 40 footer and it says 10.1 miles per hour on, on the device, I know that I've executed it correctly. And if I see the ball go two feet past that 40 foot mark, I know it's perfect. Um, I know I've done everything I can uh, in my brain to make my perception reality. And so it's all about trying to make my perception of what I feel, what I think, what I, you know, whatever it is, turn into proper reality. And uh, it definitely is validating that I'm able to execute time and time again and, and have it be good enough to win an open. I don't know if that answered your question, but yep. thank you. Yeah. Uh, there's so much talk about the driving and the distance and whatnot, uh, but you did shoot the best score today by three, I believe. Mm. Uh, do you feel like you're proving with, with a victory in a major like this, on a golf course like this, even more so that you're not just a one-dimensional player? No, I think I've got a lot of creativity. Phil said it to me earlier this week. He said, I, in 2006, I had the best short game week of my life. And that really stuck out to me for some reason because uh, I just knew that if I did it in the rough, I'm going to have to get up and down quite a bit. And so I made sure that I needed to practice those shots uh, coming into the week, and I did that beautifully and I felt super comfortable out of the rough no matter the situation I mean a perfect example was number 14 um, uphill lie just hit it off the top of the face came out dead and rolled down there to 10 feet and I made it that was huge if I don't make that and he makes his there's you know we, we, we've got a, a fight and so um, yeah I think that answered your question I don't know I'm just kind of rambling a little bit yeah it seems like the putting has really been on point and yes Yes, put putting has is, is been, sorry, this is what I, I love it. Uh, the putting has gradually improved over the course of my career. I was dead last. I was dead last when uh, I came out on tour. And, you know, the sick guys, sick golf, they, they help me understand how a ball needs to roll in order for it to give me the best chance to, to hold a putt. And over the course of these four years, every year I've gotten a little bit better. I've gotten to the top 10 now, and I, I don't know how much better I can get, but I'm going to keep trying every single every single week. We're going to go back to the Cisco WebEx. Um, Bryson, you used your own approach to the game to get here. Do you think kids watching today are now going to follow in your footsteps and look at this approach and try to, to replicate that? You know, I hope I can inspire uh, some people. My, my goal in playing golf and playing this game is to try and figure it out. I'm just trying to figure out this very complex, multivariable um, game and multidimensional game as well. It's very, very difficult. And so it's just fun. It's a fun journey for me. I hope that inspires people to say, hey, look, maybe there is a different way to do it. And, you know, not everybody has to do it my way. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying in general that there are different ways to do things. And if you can find your own way, find your passion. Like Arnie said, swing your swing. Um, that's what I do. That's what Matthew Wolf does. That's what Tiger does. That's what Phil does. That's what everybody does. And we're all trying to play the best golf we can. So hopefully my, my way inspires some people. I mean, this is my seventh win, uh, PGA Tour, first major. Um, couldn't be, be more proud. And uh, I hope that it does inspire a, a few people. Here on the left. Just for the record, what is your current height and weight? Uh, 6'1", 230 to 235, depending on if I've eaten steak or not. Do you, <laughs> do you want to be bigger when you get to Augusta? Uh, yeah. What would you say yeah. is your, like, I, you I, shooting for? I think I can get to 245. Um, it's going to be a lot of working out. I don't think it's possible. I mean, it may be. I don't know. It's just I've gained so much so quickly in a year. Um, you know, they always say when you work out, you gain your 30 pounds or, or whatever it is. And then after that, each year you, you, you half it. So you can go 15. If you keep working out every day, you just, you keep halving it. And eventually there just comes a point where you can't gain much more. Um, but I feel like I could still get up there if I work hard enough.
What's your response to people who say like it can't be healthy for the body? Or um, well, I, I, I am talking to uh, a doctor. I got all my blood sample tests, everything back a couple weeks ago, and everything is fine so far. We're going to keep monitoring it and making sure that I'm as healthy as possible because I do want to live for a long time. <laughs> Rex and then Doug. Bryson, what drove you to the range in the cold and dark last night? What were you looking for and what did you find? Yeah, so my driver was not performing in the way I wanted it to. <sighs> Thursday, Friday, I felt super comfortable with the driver. Saturday, wasn't comfortable. So I knew I needed to go to the range, figure something out so I could play for tomorrow and be super comfortable. Because if I'm comfortable with the driver, I knew I could play golf and shoot under par on this, this golf course. Um, I was able to find something out last night. And then on the sixth hole today, I figured out a little bit more. And that... that gave me the confidence to play for the rest of the day. And that was essentially, it's, it's all about the governors for me. So, you know, I, I have a limit to kind of what I do with the swing. So I don't over rotate and you can see, I missed a lot of shots left this week. My left arm wasn't holding and being stable enough through impact. And so it was just, it was just rolling over. And that's why I was drawing it and hooking it a little bit. Um, so I worked on that yesterday. And then on the sixth hole, I figured out that even though I was holding it off, my left arm was too bent, and so I was still leading to where the face was way open to the target, and then I felt like I had to do that to close the face. So once I straightened that out, got the face back a little more square, and I just felt like I could hold it off the whole way and gave me so much comfort for the rest of the round. I was going to ask you, what's for dinner tonight? Oh, <laughs> steak and potatoes. Come on, man. We got we to keep it Seriously, going. Very simple here, Bryson. What, what makes you the happiest right now? I would say, first off, knowing that the team around me has worked just as hard as I have, if not harder, to get me to where I am today. And knowing that I was able to execute for 72 holes in a major championship under the toughest conditions and perform to the highest level. And that trophy. Yeah, the trophy obviously is really nice. It comes with it, but but, but, I mean, but this has got to be some form of validation in your head. One hundred percent, no doubt, no doubt. For, for me, it's it's about the journey of can I execute every shot more repeatably than everybody else? And I was able to do that this week, and that's why I won by six. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Back to the Cisco WebEx. How do you explain how during a pandemic and what a lot of people are writing off as kind of a lost year, you've elevated your game this much? I felt like it was an opportunity, not. Not a lost year at all. I felt like it was an opportunity to do something great, change my lifestyle, uh, make it healthier, make it better. And I hope this inspires everybody else to do the same. When you have time, when you have that little free moment, don't squander it. Look at it as an opportunity for you to make yourself better. And that's, that's what I, I think I did this year, and I'm going to keep trying to do that. We're going to go left to Alex. Yeah. When you were a little kid starting out with this whole thing, was the U.S. Open the one you wanted to win, or was it something else? I would say any major was, was the ones I they, – they, they were all ones that I wanted to win. But I knew that my game would fit best for a U.S. Open. The reason for that is because I always felt growing up in college, I was always a super straight driver of the golf ball, super great iron player. And putting was always iffy, but I knew I could get around it on fast, quick greens. I was always really good on quick greens. Um, you know, and then I've, I've become a great putter. And my ball striking has improved consistently. And now I've got an advantage with this length. And – um, that's, that's all she wrote. But yes, growing up, I would say the U.S. Open was the one I thought I could win the most. Ryan. Bryson, I don't mean to look past this accomplishment after a half hour, but have you thought about how you might uh, game plan for Augusta National? Well, length is going to be a big advantage there. I know that for a fact. It's always an advantage pretty much anywhere. But given that fact, I'm going to try and prepare by testing a couple things uh, with the driver. What I mean by that is 48 inches, and then I'll also do something with the face um, to account for the, sp the new speed that I'm going at. And then uh, I got to get better with my iron play a little bit. I feel like I was great today, um, but, but definitely the driver needs to go straighter. That's, that's really my main focus still. Doug? If, uh, Bryson, if the, if the USGA had a debriefing meeting tomorrow morning to talk about how this U.S. Open was won at Wingfoot, what do you think they'd be talking about? He's hitting it forever, <laughs> and that's why he won. I mean, it was a tremendous advantage this week. You, you know, I, I kept telling everybody it's, it's an advantage hitting it far. That's an advantage. And Mark Brody was talking to Chris Como, and they were both talking about how they just made the fairways um, 
too small this week to, to have it be an advantage for guys hitting the fairway. So what I mean by that is you can make it to – let's take an example of you going like a yard wide, right, and nobody's got the fairway. Okay, length is going to win. If you make the fairways too wide, length is going to win. And so there's this, like, balance between – with the fairways and where they want to play it and where they're going to try and make you play it. But if, if distance has been such a hot topic over the last two or three years and they're looking into it now, do you think this will accelerate any desire to try and rein you guys in? It's tough to, to rein in athleticism. Um, you know, we're always going to be trying to get stronger, fitter, more athletic. I mean, Tiger inspired this whole generation to do this, um, and we're going to keep going after it. I don't think it's going to stop. Will they rein it back? I'm sure. I'm sure something might happen, but I don't know what it will be. I just know that length is always going to be an advantage. How much is uh, athleticism? How much is science, technology? Technical, well, the whatever. COR was, was locked in back in 2000 or something like that. You could only have it come off the face so much, right? And so it's been that way ever since. And the rules haven't changed. People have just gotten a little longer with their driver. The shafts have become better uh, for sustaining higher swing speeds. And, you know, we're consequently trying to just hit it as hard as we possibly can. Kyle Burks here, um, Justin James, a bunch of those guys, Josh, they all inspired me to try and go harder at it. And, you know, they are the ones breaking the barriers. I can see what is possible. And so that inspires me to, to keep pushing the limits. I don't think that science is, that, is, is as big of a role in the, the market today. I would say it's more of athleticism playing uh, probably a bigger role for that, for sure. Because I, I was hitting it, you know, on a, just a normal average tour player a year ago. And then I all of a sudden got a lot, of, a lot stronger, worked out every day, been working out every day. And all of a sudden, not because of clubs, but because of me, I was able to gain 20, 25 yards. Thank you. Bryson, yeah. our 120th U.S. Open champion, congratulations again. Thank you, guys. Thank you all.